Okay, so um, asked a question on how I let go of illness. What's the mechanism of cancelling to let go of an illness? And also about how specific one should be in letting go of illnesses. Well, you know, when I... Um, so, I was really, really inspired with Dr. Hawkins who let go of 23 illnesses uh, and had run... Um, uh, a spiritual group where people with things like cancer and <coughs> uh, they had lo lost their heavy illnesses and I had got the good opportunity to meet Dr. Hawkins and get his energy and um, so I knew that and one of the more mystical things with it was the Course in Miracles especially lesson 14 of the Course in Miracles which states uh, God did not create cancer so it's not real and but you know uh, I recommend in letting go of things that you do the daily Course in Miracles lessons because it ties you in to a field of you know like the early lessons like all my thoughts are meaningless you see I mean the ego can only hold a thought if it's special if it has importance uh, and uh, when you have uh, physical illnesses that means then that uh, uh, Essentially what's happened is all the repressed guilt, shame and fear and anger uh, has attracted um, a illness which is uh, proportional to the magnitude of repressed feelings. So if you get something life-threatening, that means you've got a lot of heavy repressed feelings. That's why you're, you know, you've got such a block to guard that you can manifest something so anti-life. Whereas if you probably only had a few mild repressed feelings, you might just get a cold or something very minor to, to um, you might attract that to, to release the repressed feelings. So, also what was very interesting with Hawkins' work is when he was doing, working with the Course in Miracles students around lesson 70 of A Course in Miracles around there, um, the students uh, stopped going uh, weak with kinesiology, muscle testing. So, like, normally, like, if you get a man off the street, if they look at a fluorescent light, their body goes weak. If you give them artificial sweeteners, their body goes weak. But then he found his students, after a certain point doing the Course in Miracles, they wouldn't go weak. You know, they could have, like, they could look at the fluorescent light, they could take artificial sweeteners, and still their body would stay strong. They'd become immune to the negativity in the world, which is pretty incredible, really. Mm. Um, so, I was doing the Course in Miracles. Now, uh, I was doing the cancellation of beliefs, like I cancel my belief in kidney failure, uh, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind, I cancel my belief in gout, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind, I cancel my belief in asthma. I would do that approximately twice a day, uh, uh, along with a load of other prayers, 12-step prayers. Uh, and in the early days, uh, what I also combined it with, not only just the cancellation, but I also did a lot of feel the feelings as well. So when I'd have acute attacks like gout attacks or asthma attacks um, or you know sitting with the chronic loss of energy with kidney failure, extreme exhaustion. So I'd just like feel out my tiredness, feel out the gout pain attacks, feel out the breathlessness with the asthma attacks and just do that plus doing the Course in Miracles, plus I was doing a 12-step program. That's like releasing all the repressed feelings. But for me it's like, even though, like, in hindsight now I'd have done it much more. I would have probably said, done the cancellations maybe, uh, like, for each of them I might have done it like 50 times a day or something. You know, it's like, so you learn more the, after, after uh, the longer you're in. So I wasn't doing it enough. So probably they, it took about three to five years to release those illnesses. Probably if I was doing it 50 times a day, Maybe that would have gone down to like two, you know, instead of three to five, maybe two to f two to three years to release those illnesses. Just cancelling the belief. And I was doing really well with the feeling the feelings out. So I think that accelerated things. But I think it is good to cancel the form. Uh, so that's what I would uh, would recommend uh, with that. But I would say I would say this. Um, uh, you know, may, I would do maybe, if, you, if you've got something really severe or frightening, 
you know, I, I would uh, do it uh, between 50 to 250 times a day, or even not continuously, mm -hmm. if it's something really horrific. And I'll, I'll just give this story to show the, the enormous power of cancelling beliefs. And I, I've shared this story before, but I think it's good to share it again. Like I was, I had a, I had a, I had a sick pigeon I was looking after, a pet pigeon, and at uh, home. So I was like the father, I'd have to feed him because he can't feed himself. And I had this huge asthma attack, and I was hospitalized. My, my lungs were full of uh, fluid, I had a horrible infection. And my blood pressure was like, you know, uh, had, had gone very low, extremely low blood pressure. So I was immediately hospitalized, and the doctors took my blood pressure and said, yeah, you've got very, very low blood pressure, we're admitting you, and they hospitalized me. And, and, then, I, and then I was there, and I was thinking about my pigeon. You know, I've got to feed the pigeon at home. I can't let him know. And the thought of him starving to death while I was in hospital. So I just said to the doctor, I said, look, uh, I'll, I'll be very quick, I'll just go home, feed the pigeon and I'll be back. You know, and the doctor looked at me like I was totally nuts, you know, you'd, we've just hospitalised you, you haven't got enough blood pressure to leave, you know. And then I said, no, I have to go. And he looked at me and then he, he went like he was going to consult with the other people. And he said, <coughs> like, he looked at me like I was mad, like, if you go here, we take no responsibility if you die. And you have to sign this piece of paper that we take, you know, we, we, we're not responsible for your death. And I think you're totally, you know, he's looking at me like I'm totally nuts. Like, he, we just hospitalized you and your blood, you haven't got enough blood pressure to leave here. So I thought, no, you know, I said, well, I thought, you know. Uh, but then I, I knew my sort of, um, I knew it was the right thing in my heart to not let the pigeon starve. It needed, it needed its bread, you see. So, um, so I cancelled my belief. I cancelled my belief in low blood pressure. I'm an infinite being subject unto it. And I said it non-stop, like 100% with 100% intensity. Cancel my belief in low blood pressure. I'm an infinite being subject unto it. I cancel my belief in low blood pressure. I'm an infinite being, like a mantra, 100%. And as I was walking to the walking home, I started to feel strong. You know, I started to feel really like I was like getting tons of energy. It's like I was feeling like an infinite being. I walked there, I fed the pigeon, came back, felt really well, and then the, doc and the doctor looked at me when I came back, and he called the nurse over to take my blood pressure, and I had normal blood pressure. My blood pressure had, had gone to absolutely like normal. And I was looking like really fit and strong and healthy and full of energy and vital. Just walked in with all this energy, and I had no, absolutely no, and they, he had just hospitalized me just, just earlier that day, kind of thing. And he looked at me and he said, Oh, we're discharging you immediately, you know, because I had like that was fine, you know. <laughs> and and so this is the thing, like you know, you you're being hospitalised. The doctors are coming, saying you've got low blood pressure, you're going to die. And just if you do it with one hundred percent intensity, because it's not it's not and it's not real. If, you know, if you had Parkinson's, if you had cancer. Um, oh, I'm, I'm recording this, so this is not medical advice, please take the advice, I have to keep saying that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not prescribing, you must speak to your health practitioner. But this is just my experience, it was like from being admitted in hospital to being discharged within a few hours and ha from having, you know, like lethal low blood pressure to having absolutely normal blood pressure just by cancelling my belief. And it just shows the enormous power because it's just, um, when you state the truth, the truth has enormous power. It's like you're in alignment with the infinite power of the universe. You know, and in God's realm, none of this exists. It's only your belief and the repressed feelings that mean that this, because you, when you have too much repressed feelings, uh, then these beliefs have enough glue to, to manifest the, these illnesses. So, so, it's also really, I mean, even Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles states, be specific. It, say, it says it in the thing, don't say illness. Like say, you know, like if it's ovarian cancer, say ovarian cancer or prostate cancer or whatever. Be specific, don't be general, you know, ill health. So, um, I remember Hawkins saying, you know, like, he cancelled his cholesterol levels and his cholesterol levels went to normal. Mm -hmm. And so, and then he carried on like eating eggs and be, and, and like junk food. It's just a, it's just a belief. You see, you have a belief that if you eat a lot of cholesterol or a lot of high fat foods, your cholesterol goes up. 
If you just cancel the belief, it has no effect on you. You know, po poison ivy. So, like, if you've got an illness, you, you can cancel the mark markers, the biological markers, because they create a lot of terror. Like mm. with kidney failure, the marker is the creatinine levels. Like they always look at your creatinine. Oh, look, your creatinine's going this way. Your creatinine's going that way. You know, so you want to cancel the high creatinine levels. Uh, and um, so uh, cancel high blood pressure. You know, can, um, if you've got like a marker for an illness, you can cancel those markers for it. So be be specific and. Uh, I didn't do this, but I think it's good practice to, if, if your head comes up with the limiting idea like um, blood pressure or kidney failure, is to cancel it immediately. Mm -hmm. I don't do that because I'm too lazy, but it would be like a good thing to challenge it, mm -hmm. rather than to not, to, to just mm -hmm. see it and then accept it as if it's real and not, mm -hmm. not immediately cancel it. It would probably accelerate the thing. I think as well, um, what really helped me though, even though I didn't cancel throughout the day, was that I did the Course in Miracles, which means like every 10 minutes or every hour of the day, you're doing a course lesson to clear away your negativity. So that regular practice throughout the day helps you not be in the negativity. So discipline is uh, really good in, in that way.